everyone. So, uh, yes, my name is Moran Frankel Pinter, uh, and I'm a NASA postdoctoral fellow. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, working with Dr. Williams, Dr. Hudd, and Dr. Grover at Georgia Tech. I'm also a proud member of the Center for Chemical Evolution and the Center for Origins of Life at Georgia Tech. And today I will tell you about chemical mutualism between RNA and cationic Depsy peptide. But first, let's start with a quick definition of what do we mean by mutualism. I'm sure uh, all, of, all of you are familiar with the definition of mutualism in biology, in which we have interactions in which both species benefit in the level of the organisms. For instance, we know that uh, the bee pollinates the flower and the flower supplies food for the bee. And it's the same thing when we talk about chemical mutualism, in which we have interactions between species in the form of molecules in which both types of polymers benefit. Here we see this, um, well, the most complex molecular machinery that we know today, the ribosome, which is composed of both RNA and proteins. We know that RNA makes proteins and proteins make RNA. And we think that these types of interactions between different types of polymers were really important very early on in chemical evolution. Before diving to our mutualism project, um, when uh, we look at the formation of peptides on the prebiotic earth, we face several challenges with condensation of amino acids into polypeptides. The first challenge is, comes from thermodynamics. It is unfav unfavorable thermodynamically to form the amide bond in aqueous solutions. Next, we have two kinetic barriers. First, to form the amide bonds, it requires high activation energy barriers, and second, if we did form a dipeptide, it can undergo another amidation to form this cyclic uh, six-membered ring, which is called diketopiperazine, which is hydrolytically very stable, and so it's hard to further elongate the polymers that are being formed. To overcome these uh, challenges, or to polymerize peptides, several solutions have been proposed. For instance, for the thermodynamic barrier, we can simply shift to dry down reactions in which the thermodynamic equilibrium is changed, and now we can, uh, we can favor condensation dehydration reactions. For the two kinetic barriers shown here, uh, we can use high temperatures, uh, but that could also lead to some decomposition of the amino acids themselves, uh, or we can use high energy molecules such as activated amino acids. Uh, but there is a questionable, uh, a questionable availability of those molecules on the prebiotic earth. In the Center for Chemical Evolution, we've come up with another uh, solution. Uh, and briefly, as I mentioned, uh, polymerization of amino acids to form a polypeptide uh, requires a high, energy, a high activation energy barrier, so a dry down we would need high temperatures. But Dr. Hud suggested uh, to use these similar building blocks to amino acids, so these are hydroxy acids, which have alcohol instead of the amine. Uh, glycolic acid, for instance, is the hydroxy acid analog of glycine, and lactic acid is the hydroxy acid analog of alanine. And we know that the hydroxy acids were very readily uh, abundant probably on the prebiotic earth because we see them in meteorites. They come from the same type of synthesis as the amino acids, and um, so they are co-localized together. Um, and we know that f to form these polyesters, uh, so this step is pretty easy because it requires lower activation energy barriers. So we can easily form polyesters. But what will happen if we will mix these two types of building blocks, amino acids and hydroxy acids, together? So what we see under dry down reactions is th that we can form Depsy peptides, which are copolymers of amino and hydroxy acids, or uh, esters and amides. And the reason why we can form these, uh, these peptide bonds is through a mechanism called ester-amide exchange. Once we have our esters, we have an activated carbonyl that can undergo a nucleophilic, a nucleophilic attack with an amine uh, in a process called ester-amide exchange, and now we formed an amide bond uh, and replace an ester bond. So this process is very, uh, we can readily form uh, Depsy peptides just via dry down reactions. So, for the mutualism project, our hypothesis is the interactions between different types of polymers. Uh, 
were, were really important to shape chemical evolution. And we want to, in this project, we want to establish that specifically interactions between cationic DAPC peptides and RNA uh, were really important and allowed them to mutually interact to promote the synthesis, stability, and function. As model interactions, we chose electrostatic interactions, so we study interactions between cationically, uh, between cationic DAPC peptides and the negatively charged RNA backbone. And we ask two main questions. First, we ask, can we form cationic DAPC peptides on uh, VA dry down reactions when we mimic um, these um, prebiotic um, environments? The second question was, if we did form cationic DAPC peptides, can they mutually interact with RNA and promote it and in a way that will be really interesting to look at in terms of function, structure, and so on. For the first question, uh, just for this slide, please no photos because um, the pa our paper has just been accepted to PNAS. It's under embargo. Uh, so the first question, can we form cationic DEPC peptide on prebiotic earth? We, uh, formed, they, uh, we formed DEPSI peptides via dry down reactions of hydroxy acids. So we have lactic acid and glycolic acid. And we use six different cationic amino acids. Three of them are the proteinaceous amino acids. By that I mean the, amino acid, the cationic amino acids that are uh, found today in proteins and they are incorporated during translation. Uh, these are arginine, histidine, and lysine. The three on the bottom here are shorter versions of lysine, which have fewer methylene chains or methylene groups on the side chain. These are ornithine, 2,4-diaminobutyric acid, and 2,3-diaminopropionic acid. These uh, non-proteinaceous amino acids uh, are considered to be more prebiotically, prebiotically plausible. We find them in meteorites and in model prebiotic reactions. So what we did in our experiments we dried uh, down one hydroxy acid with either one of, separately, with either one of these different amino acids, and we formed DAPC peptides. Now, you can imagine how complex these different um, combinations will be, because our cate these cationic amino acids can link through different uh, groups. For instance, when we uh, dry down glycolic acid with lysine, so lysine has to amino groups, the alpha amine and the epsilon amine. So both of these amines can potentially uh, react to form an amide bond. Uh, we've characterized the DEPC peptides using a variety of methods, um, including FTIR, mass spec, H HPLC, and so on. But the method that was most informative was NMR. And what it did, it allowed us to look at the collective properties of the ensemble of molecules, or the chemical signature of the DEPC peptide that we formed. And what we found is very interesting. So for instance, in the case of lysine, lysine, as I mentioned, can amidate just through the alpha amine or just through the epsilon amine or using both the alpha and the epsilon amine. What we found by NMR is that actually most of the polymers that we formed were, uh, were those in which lysine amidated through the alpha amine but still had a free epsilon amine, and we have a pretty good understanding to why this is. Uh, but in the beginning, it was quite uh, very, it will, still, it's really interesting to see that. So 77% of all of our polymers look like that, which implies that it's just like in today's biology, where the lysine will, uh, we have these, um, I guess, linear polymers with free amino groups on the cationic amino acids. Uh, and hopefully you can see this work soon, but just to summarize, uh, we have seen something very interesting is that the proteinaceous amino acids condense more extensively and selectively through their alpha amine compared to the non-proteinaceous amino acids. And we think that we understand now the chemical basis for selection of today's cationic amino acids over uh, non-proteinaceous amino acids that we also had in our soup. So, uh, yes, we can form cationic DEPC peptides, but what can we do with them? Can they take part in a mutualistic manner with RNA? So, to that end, uh, Dr. Lehman uh, synthesized a cationic um, DEPC peptide or a peptide, and we had in our system both labeled RNA, this was a U20, and a FEM labeled 
uh, peptide or DAPC peptides. And the first thing that we wanted to do is, can we see physical association between the two types of polymers? So we use the commonly used band shift assay. Uh, very briefly, under native gel conditions, when we run RNA, it will migrate to a certain extent. But upon interaction, for instance, with a peptide, uh, it will migrate a bit slowly, and we should be able to, to look at that. So what you can see here is that indeed we have physical association between peptides and depth, cationic peptides and depth peptides. Uh, the uh, unbound RNA is labeled in red, and we can see this smear and even the distinct band uh, in orange that implies the colocalization of both the RNA and the peptide or depth peptide. Once we've had this physical association, we went to explore different ways or means in which we can look at the mutualism between the RNA and the cationic DEPC peptides, both synthesized DEPC peptides, but also the ones that we formed in our dry down reactions. What we see here is uh, one example of such a mutualism uh, aspect that we saw, which is really the most fundamental element of mutualism. Uh, if interactions between different types of polymers, if we have these interactions, this should lead to a slower degradation rate of the polymers compared to if they are not associated. And this is what we see here. So we have our um, cationic Depsy peptide with just one ester. Um, we can follow the degradation of this ester because esters degrade much faster compared to amide bonds. So looking at this HPLC chromatogram, this here you can see the degradation of this DAPC peptide from one minute to 180 minutes. The new peak that arises here is the degraded, uh, degraded DAPC peptide. So you can see the degradation. This is without RNA. Once we introduce RNA to the, sorry, to the system, you can see a robust difference in the degradation rate. So um, we introduced a 10 mer RNA duplex. And you can see that there is barely degradation of that starting DEPC peptide. When we go and quantify these differences, here you can see the percentage of the intact DEPC peptide versus time. And you can see in black without RNA, in blue with RNA, we can see that RNA duplex increases the um, DEPC peptide half-life by about 30-fold. So this is a robust, improve, um, robust protection. To conclude, um, we have seen that cationic, we've shown that cationic DEPC peptides can be formed via dry down reactions very robustly, selectively, and it was uh, great to see that. In addition, we've, I've shown you that RNA protects the esters within cationic DEPC peptides. And we go about and look at the different um, mutualism that we can see. And um, one more example that we saw is that, that I didn't show you is that cationic DEPC peptides can increase the thermal stability of RNA. And overall, these findings suggest that indeed cationic DEPC peptides and RNA mutually interact to promote each other as structure and function. They protect each other. And the takeaway message from this lecture is that we think that, yes, interactions between different types of polymers was very, very important in shaping chemical evolution because together they are going to be more stable and thus they will be selected um, further on. And lastly, I would like to thank um, the PIs that I work with, Dr. Williams, Dr. Hudd, Dr. Grover, uh, our research groups. Uh, here listed all of the co-authors, so you're a team of researchers who worked on this, um, this project that I showed you. Uh, specifically, uh, the leaders of this project are Dr. Williams and Dr. Lehman. Um, Jay Haynes did the gel shift assay that I showed you. Uh, Martin C. helped with the NMR analysis. Uh, Dr. Lehman uh, synthesized cationic DEPC peptides and looked at the degradation um, assay that I showed you of the DEPC peptide. And I would also like to thank the funding agency, um, NASA Postdoctoral Program, for funding me, uh, and also NSF, NASA, uh, for their various grants and centers that they allow us to be at. And thank you for listening. All right, we have time for one quick question. Uh, Uli? Mm -hmm. Do you know whether this uh, aromatic ring or this leaf, two of the aromatic rings can be 
Mm. Uh, yeah, so potentially there, there could be such association, I mean such an effect. Uh, we also looked at the um, association not through these labeled peptides and Depsy peptides that I showed, but also using just the labeled RNA, and we still saw these uh, smears, just we couldn't see the colocalization. But yeah, I mean there could be some effect, but it's not just through the, the fluorophore. All right, I think uh, we're short of time, so let, let's leave the questions for later. Thanks.